What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, I figured it was about time that we check back in on Ragnorium. If you don't know what Ragnorium is, I feel like the title of this video should more or less tell you. You take a bunch of idiot clones and you send them off to a faraway planet and you just hope that they survive. That's pretty much it. You build a colony, you make them wear skirts made out of leaves, you try to keep them from like breeding with the local giant space bee population. In general, the, the, the clones are not the soundest of mind, having been assembled from the DNA of others. But you're doing your best to help them survive because the way the game feels about it is like, if you can keep idiot clones alive in this environment, then actual human beings might be able to survive here, and maybe habitating this planet is actually feasible. So anyways, if after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself, I have a link for you down below in the description. You can check that out and wishlist it. Aside from that, you'll find a link to my Discord, my Twitch stream, my Twitter, all that fun stuff. Let's start a new mission and spend about 30 minutes with the game. Fair warning, there's going to be a fair amount of editing in this because like I it, it plays kind of slowly and so anyways I'm gonna keep it to like the bullet points of us like accomplishing tasks all right so we got to pick our difficulty we're gonna go with Odyssey after we go with Odyssey we're gonna have to decide on a planet that we want to go to there's Esma 1 there's Iran 2 there's Saran 3 there's Aldon 4, and there's Tannis 6, and I think this one isn't in the early access just yet. Tannis 6 seems like it's going to be the most friendly and the most... It's got the most greenery, okay? So we're going to go for the greenery. We've got to pick our spaceship. Uh, this game is sort of interesting in that, like, your progress is carried over in between runs. So it's, like, got a little bit of a roguelite element. Basically, as you accomplish tasks without your clone dying, you get this stuff called influence, and you can use the influence to, like, get new ships, unlock new things that give you a better start the next time around. For right now, we've only got the Quant Thruster MK1, and we've got six slots on here, but these middle slots are for, like, machinery, and so they're not going to be that useful. These four slots are what we're going to be looking at. In order to start the game off, we have to have a starter cargo, and we have to have three clones. And so we don't really have much of an option there for, like, extra tricked out bits. So I'm going to generate a couple of clones, and we'll see what we get here. Uh, we've got, this guy's got faster attack speed, and that guy learns faster. We'll go with the lady who learns faster. We will go with the guy who has faster attack speed and make him, like, a warrior. And then for our third clone, let's see if we can get decent stats on him. So his name is Goofy. Fair enough, dude. Uh, this guy has watering crops more efficiently. All right. I, I don't see how useful that might be in a long-term situation, but, like, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of time theft or time loss from watering crops. Like, I have a garden. It, it takes me, like, an eighth of a second to water the garden is all that I'm saying. So saving 30% of that I don't think is really going to hurt altogether that much. But you know what? I'm open to being surprised. Mission 1, Archmage. And so now we get treated to, like, this super awesome scene of our ship flying over the planet. But first they give you a super awesome scene of a loading bar. So we'll get there in a minute. Okay, so here we are. That's our spaceship. It's belching flame into the atmosphere. Uh, we can deploy our pods wherever and whenever we'd like to do so. Uh, but we're going to have to decide which in this area we're going to like the best. I'm kind of, like, looking at it. This thing will just circle around. So, like, if you miss the spot you like, you might have to wait a few minutes. But you can, you, can, you can put it back down where you like. Um, it'll give you kind of a synopsis of how hard it's going to be to survive. I kind of like this little area right here. That looks good to me. And so I'm going to ping that. And let's, like, fire our pods. I absolutely love this as an intro to the game right here. Like, the firing of all these pods down to the ground. And once that's done, we can swap over to the viewport that we're going to be using for the rest of the game. So here we are. Uh, we're chilling. We've got a whole bunch of clones on the ground. Once the dust settles, we'll be in much better condition. Uh, you've arrived in one piece. Did you have a pleasant journey? I can't imagine how measurable the distance was in human terms. Yeah. I, I don't really need the briefing. I think we're going to be okay. Uh, so really, the first thing that we kind of want to do here is wake everybody up. So we can take an instant action, wake them up, and then we can go over here, wake them up, and then we'll go over here and wake them up. So everybody's woken up for right now. I would suggest that we send somebody to harvest this crate right here since it has all of our goodies inside of it. There's going to be a bunch of scrap from our pods or whatever, but like it shouldn't be that big of a deal. We should be fine. Uh, I'm also going to tell somebody maybe to go and harvest this bush right here. There's a reason for that. Uh, we're all just kind of hanging brain right now, dude. Like, everybody's just walking around naked. This guy's got God only knows on his head. I, I don't even know what he's got right there. 
He's got something around his neck, although I can't entirely tell what it is. Uh, so anyways, things we need to do. We need to set an active objective. And so, like, I think that primitive crafting is a good place to start. These objectives right here, when you complete them, you get influence. And influence is the thing that carries over in between runs effectively. Uh, so there you go. We'll work on survival for right now. We also need to pick a new research. Uh, the Genesis operation is a good place to start because it gives you all of your basic tasks. Uh, effectively, research is carried out. You see this guy, he just broke out like a little keyboard that he's resting on top of his donger right now. Uh, he's going to play with that massive stream deck right there next to this quantum computer until we learn the basics of survival because that's how ancient cavemen did it. You know, don't mess with the classics. Uh, we do have a little progress meter here for how long it's taking them to break open this bush and how long it's taking them to harvest all the stuff out of there. One thing that we should probably do... Oh, we don't have... Okay, so I've got to unlock some construction areas first. And we'll go right here, right here, right here. And we need a little bit more influence before we can get that. But we've got the starting areas, so we can set up gathering zones. So I'd like for our resources to kind of just be stacked up over here. We'll just make like a two by three. And then we'll have like a little maintenance zone right there too where they can fix stuff and repair stuff. And what you'll see is this little guy has no tasks, so he's going to start like ferrying stuff over there and picking things up off the ground. Uh, apparently, we just learned how to make vegetation, so that's cool. Our Genesis operation research is almost done, so actually, it is done. Nice. I will suggest now that we learn how to make a campfire next. That seems like a good thing to have for survival. Uh, for our primitive crafting task, what we need to do now is we need to put down a crafting table. I'm going to put this... I don't know. We'll just slap it down like right there. It can go wherever it wants to go, and somebody should eventually come along and gather up the wood that's required in order to build that and bring it up over to this side. But just in case they don't, I can sort of like manually task up this stuff too. There's two more leaves left to go on that tree before we're ready to rock, and then we can move them on to a different gathering task, which for right now is by and large going to be us acquiring wood so that we can make a fire and we can make a workbench because right now we have no wood. So like, meh, gotta work on that. You guys done with those leaves right there? I believed in you. Have you concluded our leafy task? Apparently we have, and our commander leveled up to two, so I guess that that's something rad to be excited about. I'm going to tell them to cut this tree down real fast. Because they are idiot clones, they're going to try to do that with like their faces or like their teeth or like the stubble from their beard or something. They're just going to try to use friction to get the tree down, okay? And then once the tree is down, we should be all accessible. Oh, good. They're stacking up my things. we got a couple of rocks over here, so that should help out with gathering. Uh, they've already got wood, actually, it looks like. So maybe I can cancel that task and not, like, overtask ourselves. Let me take a look. Yeah, we've actually got... A little bit of wood to play around with. It's not a lot, but it should be enough to get the workbench over. There you go. Yeah, flap your butt cheeks on over there and get it done, chief. So the crafting table is done. We just got like a little morale bonus because we completed a thing. Everybody's happy. We got some research XP. So we need a new task and we need a new thing. So I'm going to say let's learn how to make a campfire next. So that's a good idea. And then our new research I think will be primitive like we got we got containers we got zones we've got wooden base over here i'll probably go with primitive crafting blueprints so that we can make shoes and stuff because like right now we're all just walking around with a little like leaf over our johnsons and i feel like when the bees come or like the bad guys come we pro i mean it might work for the intimidation factor like i feel like i'm less likely to fight a guy who's all sweaty and muddy and running at me completely and totally naked but at the same time it, it leaves something to be desired in terms of, like, concealment and in terms of, you know, building a campfire as the nights on this planet are cold and our sleeping colonists will freeze to death. Yeah, that's what I'm working on. I'm, I'm in the market for it. Don't you, don't you worry there, chief. I'm working on it. Uh, they're all idle, so I guess I'll tell them to go cut a tree real fast. I don't know if there's any flint or anything around, so there's stones coming out of there. We've got debris piles over there. There's a stone silo over there. I need flint, though. Uh, eventually, we can get, like, a, a quest or, like, a research that will show us where the nearest flint is. But for the moment, we're sort of stuck panning and scanning around. I would recommend, like, I don't know if I can zoom out further than this. Like, I wish that I could, but as of right now with the scroll, it's not letting me do it. And so, like, I do wish that you could zoom out a little bit further. Like, it feels like the game's camera doesn't take topography into account 
uh, when it comes to like the camera height. And so like if you go over here, it like zooms in really, really close. And I wish I could leave it like further out. Hopefully this guy doesn't horrifically maim himself chopping wood with his fist. If nothing else, uh, I guess he'll have really thick fist skin. And the thick fist skin might carry him and make him stronger. I'm going to look around for some flint while we wait for these objectives to get done. Okay, well, we've got flint up here, and we just completed our research. So, let's continue. I would like to learn how to make a wooden base. That'd be really, really cool. Uh, but we got to make the campfire first, so let's clear that objective real fast. Even though we don't have a way to light the fire, we do have a way to start a fire. And so, we'll put the fire right there real fast. Uh, they should sprint into action and get that done. I did find flint. It's up here to the north. And so there's stone right there, and there's flint right there. Uh, we need a skill called mining, unfortunately, to get that done. And so we don't know how to mine yet. So we're just going to be stuck picking up loose flint. And of the loose flint, I don't actually see flint floating around right now. But the good news is when we take an objective over here, we should be able to... Yeah, it'll basically show this to us we can send out a party to go find flint and they'll carry it back with them and so what we want to do over here is you kind of just want to pick somebody so like the captain and let's say the captain and pee, pee can go over there it's a really unfortunate name oh there's closer flint i missed that one it was right next to my base but there's dudes over here man apparently they're banditos send all three just in case we need the numbers in order to beat them in honorable fisticuffs combat they don't seem that strong, but if they dogpile on the same guy, we're going to have, like, big issues. So you guys go out and get your flint. What they're going to do is this little expedition is basically like a quest marker. They'll follow it on over here with the nav mesh, and then they'll pick up all the flint that's around. Which, actually, I think we can flag the flint, too. Oh, they're going to try to fight us, man. Yep, I can tell already. Well, hopefully we are better at fighting than they are. We appear to be kicking that guy's ass. And then this guy seems to be having a rough day, too. So there you go. We won our first combat. Uh, they've got water bottles over here. Did they drop anything else on the ground? I don't know that they did, but we're going to basically flag all this stuff up for storage. Sweetie Cakes, are you, like, doing something over here? All right, well, we found the objective, so they should head back, and it should be all done. Uh, they should also pick up this rally flag right here. You don't have really have direct control over anybody in your party. I hate to say, like, you kind of just put flags around, sort of like... What was the name of that fantasy medieval game? Where you put, like, quest flags around, and you put, like, things around, and then the adventurers kind of just did whatever they wanted. This game is very, very similar in that regard, where, like, oh, no, dude, he's been stung by a megaflora. Yeah, kill off the kill off the megafauna, dude. Wipe that thing out. All right. Well, since that objective is done, uh, we got a skill capsule for free. I think this guy is bleeding. It looks like he's gonna give himself medical care, though. Yeah, he's bandaging, so he should be all right. Uh, he was losing a lot of blood, though, like a very, very concerning volume of blood. Uh, it said we should have unlocked a skill capsule around here somewhere. I don't see it. But it should be around somewhere. I don't know. What is that right there? A dead bee? Can we, like, skin it or something? Yeah, skin the bee, dude. Maybe we'll get some kind of, like, awesome knowledge from skinning the bee. We can't do anything with the dead guys over there, which kind of concerns me. But we can fuel this with wood. So let's go ahead and fuel that with wood real fast. We've gotten, like... 12 wood out of, I think, the tree right here. We need a new objective. We can go with wood hoarder. Yeah, let's do wood hoarder. We're already working on that anyways, so like it's not going to retroactively give us credit for it, but now that we have a fire lit, hopefully we will not let this go out. If we let this go out, it's a big problem for us because we're in like a boreal environment and these old turds are going to freeze. The, the clones can be kind of dumb from time to time. I, I've seen them let really bad things happen. But I've accepted, so like I've noticed a lot of the reviews are like, my clones are idiots. I go the other direction with it, where I just assume that my clones are really, really bad clones. Like, our cloning technology is not great. Uh, but we needed to send somebody to the planet that nobody would miss if they died doing something stupid. And so like, 
you know, I, I accept that my clones are going to be dumb. And so when they don't do things that I want them to do, I kind of just like laugh it off and be like, oh, you idiot clone wearing a weird snork mask. Uh, we do have leaves right now. That means that I can make pants for people, but there's a quest to make pants. And so, like, I'd rather do the quest to make pants than just make them independent. Alright, so our wood gathering's almost done. I just queued up a random research because I didn't want to waste time. He's working on primitive containers right now so that we can store leaves, and we can store wood, and we can store stuff like that inside of its own area. Uh, so we've completed that quest right there. Everybody's mood should be pretty good. Inside of here, you can see their inventory, their equipment. You can see, like, their skills and what they have right here. These are Gen 1 clones, uh, which means that they're not, like, super great. Uh, you get higher tier clones later on as you get further on into the game. Uh, they want me to do homeopathy next. Homeopathy is... Oh, okay. So that's basically us learning to do, like, Warcraft and stuff. Oh, it's a, it's a mission. So they want me to go out and, like, find some mushrooms or something. Okay, I feel like I can do that. We'll just send these two guys out instead of sending the scientist. We'll just let him bang away at his task. You guys go out, and apparently it wants me to lick mushrooms or something. That's, like, what's going to fix our colony. So you know what? You lick those mushrooms, my dudes. I give you full permission to use all kinds of guttural noises. Just, mmm, me like mushrooms. Shove in mouth. So tasty. Don't know if poison. It's fine. We'll deal. Apparently we killed off a bee, too. So that's pretty cool. It's now raining, uh, which sort of sucks for us. Spoiler alert. Rain is probably going to make us cold and uncomfortable considering our willies are adjacent to the breeze right now. But, like, maybe someday we'll get past it. It looks like... Do we resume this? I guess I told them to skin the bee. Which, like, I'm fine with. Apparently, they did the homeopathy thing. I didn't see them go over to the mushroom, but... I assume the game is not lying to me right now. The first cut, we can cut down a we can cut down a tree. Stick warriors is good. Let's do stick warriors because my guys need weapons anyways, so that they can fight a little bit more gooder. Uh, so we can go into the workbench over here. We've got primitive wraps, which apparently are wood and leaves. It wants me to make sticks, so I'm gonna go ahead and have somebody craft three sticks over here, just so that we complete that quest with some rapidity. Another fun thing about this game that you may not be aware of, is that if you tell people to do tasks, you see that drop rate right there that's lifted above the thing that's highlighted? So if you tell somebody to, like, non-stop chop down trees, they have a chance to get basically a custom... It's a skin, so basically they'll get a custom hat that they wear that denotes that they spent a lot of time chopping trees. On my last map that I was doing to, like, remind myself how to play the game, I sent a guy off to gather sticks from, like, a bush, and he did it for so long that he came back wearing the bush on his head, and it was just a free piece of gear that the game gives you. Uh, we've got sticks around, so what we want to do now is we want to equip everybody. So if we go to our colonist menus over here, yeah. colonist menu, uh, you can go ahead and you can go to weapon slot and you can put a stick in it. Uh, we've crafted all the sticks we need for the quest, which is pretty cool. I think there's an extra stick right there, too. I think he's only made, like, one of them. But anyways, we give people sticks, it's going to raise their damage by one or two. It's not much, but it's something to give them, like, an edge over the enemy. And we can also make bandages out here. We can go with a skill capsule. Uh, to go find things. The skill capsules basically get integrated into your character and make them, like, better at stuff. Uh, we've got a shrine nearby that burns with eternal fire. I don't know, man. We'll go We'll go with bandages as our next objective. How about that? It sounds like a, I didn't really want to send you over here. Uh, is everybody, like, good with... So, like, let's make sure everybody has, like, a weapon. So he's got a stick. Uh, you get a stick, too. And, like, everybody gets a stick is really the, the, the secret that we're chasing after for right now. We're moving up the tech tree aggressively. And so, as you can see, they're all running around with a stick on their back now like Rambo. So, if they have to fight, they'll get a little bit of bonus damage. We can also make... We have enough leaves. I'm going to say... Let's make three skirts so that people aren't walking around all willy-nilly anymore. We'll make, like, three sandals. So we have shoes and we have a skirt. I think that'll make us a lot more presentable as far as life goes. Now, we have 21 wood at the moment, so I think our wood supply is looking pretty solid. I'm going to cancel now that we've... I'm going to cancel the cutting the tree flag right there because I don't think we need it anymore. 
it looks like what do we have left so we've got one skirt left and two sandals well that's not too bad uh, we're gonna go into our equipment real fast and we'll go waist slot put a skirt on you we'll go in here put a skirt on you that way we're now like socially acceptable we can ride on the subway we can go to public locations we'll probably still get weird looks because we're making we're wearing pants that are made out of like an azalea bush well you know it's better than nothing and it makes them happy like they they get happy when you when you put pants on them it's like they have this deep-seated desire to absolutely wear pants our progress is going okay over here I don't know we've got containers yeah containers are probably a good idea we've got a wood platform for holding wood yeah we could put one of those in and then we've got a leaf basket over here yeah we can put that in too why not that's an invalid location okay it's probably too close to the storage all right we'll put that in right there so we've got a couple of buildings ready to rock now well, that takes two wood and that takes two wood so it's not that hard to do uh, we also have construction that we can do right here uh, we can actually build custom bases in this game kind of rust style with the little pieces that we have available and so you can put in walls, you can put in, you know, doors and ramps and all that kind of stuff. I've seen some pretty impressive bases that have been built in this game. Uh, so just something to think about. Yeah. You don't have pants on, and I question why that is. So go ahead and put some pantalones on, homie. You, you've you earned it, man. Throw those, throw those things on there. Oh, good. They're stocking up the benches and stuff, too. Very nice. I don't know if that's going to give us any, like, passive benefit aside from just cleaning out our storage area. But I'll take it. I will absolutely take it. Uh, apparently, they just had a conversation about how the sun is hiding behind the clouds or something right there. Uh, either that or there is a giant boob surrounded by fog. I, I don't know what they were talking about. Given some of the discourse that takes place with these clones, it could be anything and everything. You, you never know. They are going to get a warmth bonus from the clothes that we just put on them, so if it gets a little bit colder tonight, they should be a little bit more comfortable. Wow, I kind of overdid it with the wood, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, I think we need to make some kind of new bench in order to... We've got the primitive crafting table right there. We've got fire. We've got vegetation that we can plant. Okay, well, let's take a look at our research then and figure out what we want to do next. So in here, we've got homeopathy too. That does give us the homeopathy table, which I think is going to allow us to do our bandages. Uh, we can also research rooms that are going to be like dedicated to certain types of crafting. Uh, but we'll go with homeopathy first, since that's kind of like in there. I do think our scientist is getting like slightly better at scientificating, um, but it's hard to say. We have many pairs of sandals ready to rock now. And what you may not notice when you first play this game is that if your people don't have shoes on, they actually consume like 40% more energy to do any task. And so really getting shoes on people is a super good idea. Like you just gotta whittle some Ugg boots out of like some of the leaves and trash that you're finding around. See, I'm almost done with the last pair of sandals. Good. Uh, you go ahead and put on the last pair of sandals, would you? Sir, I demand that you put on sandals. Oh, he's already got sandals on, okay. Yeah. It's just this guy then that's really resisting the urge to put on sandals. Oh, he swapped sandals. Those other sandals were not to his specifications. Okay, well, our research is not going to be done for quite some time. And so I do think... Do we have foundations or something here? So we've got an upper floor. We've got a door frame. We've got a wall. Okay, well, let's consider putting in walls, maybe? I guess that's an invalid location. Oh, uh, it wants me to kind of do like the... Okay, we can do that. That's no biggie. I think we can pull that off. Uh, let's go ahead, and I don't know if the rock is going to go away when I put this right here. But how much is that costing me? Four wood. Okay, so that's expensive. Uh, we'll put you in right there, and we'll just make like a little tiny house for right now. And then we'll have a ramp that goes up into it. And then maybe we will consider putting in walls. Yeah, that seems all right. Uh, we need a door frame right there, obviously. We can put in, like, a little window right there just so, like, we get some natural lighting, you know what I mean? Something to kind of drive up the housing value here. And then I need to rotate the camera to get that last slot in, I think. There we go. I have no idea how long it's going to take them to build this base. It may take forever. It may happen really, really quickly. I'll keep an eye on my wood supply, though, because I've got a feeling it's going to fall off a little bit. So there's going to be a chance that we should probably tell somebody to go cut a tree. 
it's gonna take a while. We don't have the appropriate tools or the appropriate willpower or the appropriate brain cells to chop down a tree, but you know, given enough time, I feel like if we leave the flag there, we may be surprised by the results that come out on the other end. So anyways, uh, this is Ragnorium. It's a colony building game with roguelite elements. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Uh, this game was rough when it first came out, but they've got their user reviews up to almost like 77% now, up from where it was, and so that's really, really good. The developer is an updating madman, by the way. Like, the developer, that man works. Uh, this dude has put out, like, in a year since I covered the game last, he's put out something like... 10 or 12 content patches like he's very very good about kind of meeting goals and putting out updates and that to me sounds really really promising for any faults that the game might have if a game has flaws and it only gets like two major patches a year like it's kind of like okay well i'll keep an eye on it but this one man this developer is just you can tell like he's got the framework the framework in and now he's just adding stuff to it and so anyways, that and the bug fixes have me really, really optimistic about where this game's going to go over time. I think it's a really, really unique post-apocalyptic game for building a colony. I think it's really, really humorous, too, just watching what your little guys do and, like, the fights they get into and, like, the scuffles and whatnot. And I've been enjoying my time with it. So anyways, I'll see y'all later. Thank you for stopping on in, and I'll see you tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Bye!